Welcome to the HCI Family of Podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Sophie Thompson, welcome to the conversation today. Thank you very much, John. Pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Birmingham. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah, and today we're going to be talking about using virtual reality for upskilling and professional development, a super fun space to kind of explore. And this is really the crux behind your your whole business. And so I'm really uh, excited to explore this with you and to pick your brain and to get some really cool insights into this emerging area of professional development and upskilling. As we get started, I wanted to share Sophie's bio with everybody. Sophie Thompson is the co-founder and CEO of Virtual Speech, an award-winning education platform that combines e-learning with practice exercises online and in virtual reality. Sophie started Virtual Speech in 2015 as a way to overcome her fear of public speaking using VR. Since then, Virtual Speech has developed a catalog of 30 plus courses focused on communication and interpersonal skills from public speaking to active listening, leadership, sexual harassment, prevention, and more. Virtual speech has helped hundreds of thousands of people across 130 countries to improve their skills and confidence using VR. And Sophie has appeared on BBC World News, Forbes, The Wall Street Journal, talking about VR for learning. A wonderful background. Anything you would like to highlight by way of your personal context before we dive on in? The only thing that I would highlight really is a bit more around how we first started, because people always find that quite interesting. So back in 2015, I was still at university and I had an assessed presentation coming up and I had severe social anxiety at that point in my life. And so you can imagine my absolute fear (laughs) knowing that I was having to do a presentation in front of the class that would be assessed. And we created virtual speech as the first VR app to overcome the fear of public speaking because we realized that virtual reality was uniquely placed to provide a psychologically safe environment to practice Mm. a skill like public speaking. And we all know you need to practice to become A, competent at something, but B, confident at it as well. So that's how we started out. And then, yeah, nearly nine years later now, um, things have expanded. Yeah, well, that's that's really cool. And I think we can all relate to the public speaking anxiety. I mean, I think it's kind of the rare person who doesn't have some level of butterflies in their stomach and feeling nervous and anxious about uh, speaking in front of a group. Um, I've always been jealous of those people, by the way, but I I think they're the rarity. I think most people do Mm -hmm. have some anxiety. And so practice does make perfect, or at least practice makes confident, right? And and then you're able to to move forward without getting too caught up in your own um, self-consciousness. So using VR for that kind of uh, practice, I think it is really tremendous. Uh, I remember years ago when I was going through university, I'm old. So, you know, but 20 plus years ago when I'm going through university, uh, you, we, we had lots of opportunities in our courses, you know, uh, around professional, uh, presentations and such. We just had to do practices again and again and again. And of course it was always in front of students, uh, which was helpful. We got live feedback and we had that experience. Um, but, that's a higher stakes, more time intensive kind of a way to practice than what you're describing. Um, so, so maybe just parse that out a little bit. Like what, what's the value from your perspective, say just for a moment, we can continue on with the public speaking um, uh, element uh, to, you know, say a, a university course where you're practicing presentations in front of a classroom versus using this VR approach. Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned it briefly yourself around that, it being less resource intensive. So in terms of um, resources at the university and time of other students. And one of the great things about practicing in front of other people is the feedback that that they give. But some people feel awkward giving feedback that isn't glowingly positive. So with VR practice, you can get feedback through AI, which is much more objective rather than subjective, isn't worried 
about hurting your feelings, but also knows that we're not all perfect. So, for yes. example, virtual speech will give feedback on your use of hesitation words, how many ums and ahs you're saying, pace, volume, tone, eye contact, listenability, mm -hmm. which is about whether you're using jargon or not. Um, as well as on the content of what you've actually said as well. So that can be anything from, from structure to asking you questions about the content that you've said. So the main benefit I would say is that the feedback is based more on theory and frameworks, and it's not shy to tell you one way or the other. Um, it is still nice. I would like to add that because we're, we're here to encourage people and support them, not to, to put them down. So for example, if you have like a score, you won't get a score of like one out of 10 for something because there'll always be something good that somebody has done, but it will also highlight where they can improve and then they can practice straight away and they can practice again based on that feedback now or they can do it tomorrow or the day after. They can practice directly at the point of need. They don't have to just wait for that one class every semester. Yeah, thank you. And that's nice to hear that it's not just brutal feedback. <laughs> um, yeah, it can be nuanced in, in how the, the constructive feedback is provided. That's wonderful. And I've never experienced virtual speech, um, it, though it sounds wonderful. And I'm a university professor. And so I'm like, oh, my first thought is as you're describing this, oh, man, I want to sign up all my students <laughs> for this <laughs> so that they can get more practice because they get practice in lots of their classes. But it, it's it's just not enough. Like they just need more. And I love the idea of just immediate, thorough feedback um, for students that they can get through this kind of technology. Uh, because there's only so much I can provide. There's only so much their classmates will provide. Um, and mm -hmm. and they need to just iterate. They need to get lots of, of you know, I think of it like with the baseball analogy, you just got to get a lot of at-bats to get comfortable behind the plate. And it's the same thing with speaking. You just got to do it. And you got to get lots of uh, runs through uh, for you to feel more confident. And so I think that's tremendous. And I think this is different, but using some of the type of AI technology you're describing – you know, my 10 year old son, he's in grade school. And just last week he had to submit an essay and he, he worked so hard on this and he, he really put a lot of time and effort into it. And then he, he find he was super nervous about submitting it. He finally submitted it. And then to my surprise, within like five seconds, he immediately gets back like this super thorough rubric with feedback on all this stuff. Cause it was AI um, oh, wow. feedback. Right. And it was immediate. And I looked through, I'm like, wait a minute. And I looked through that and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is like really good feedback <laughs> on his essay. <laughs> and I'm like the world is, is changing so much in, in terms of being able to leverage these technologies. Like let's rather than just being scared of AI, like let's lean into this. How amazing for professional development and upskilling for people within organizations, you know, if we can use this type of an approach and he's just in fifth grade, you know, a 10, a 10 year old, but imagine if we use similar types of immediate feedback mechanisms uh, with thorough, meaningful, constructive feedback for professionals, members of our team, et cetera. Yeah. It's just more efficient. And I mean, yeah, from a more. university professor point of view, you can have the, the AI feedback to provide very objective feedback, but then mm -hmm certainly with virtual speech and I'm sure with other platforms too, you can send that recording to your professor so that they can listen to it too. And then you can also get their feedback, but you wouldn't focus on if, if somebody is saying lots of ums and ahs, or you wouldn't focus as much on their right. eye contact, but that those are all elements of how you deliver um, a presentation, for example. So then you can focus on the bits where humans are uniquely placed to comment on, whereas the AI can focus more on the bits that that is better at commenting on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. So we've been kind of talking about this, the origin story of virtual speech and, uh, and public speaking practice, but you do a lot of different types of courses uh, to help develop. Um, maybe describe another couple of examples around how your virtual reality is being utilized for upskilling and learning and professional development in the workplace. Yeah, sure. So um, one of our most recent courses is focused around difficult conversations and um, we leverage AI with that. And you can basically have role plays on demand. So if you think of um, a performance review or um, a disciplinary, for example, those are really hard conversations to practice mm -hmm. for, especially if you're a new manager or it's one of the first times you're having these conversations. And 
it's important for people to be able to practice them so that they come at it from an angle that is empathetic to both parties as well. Um, and so you can use VR and AI to practice conversations like that. So if you put on your VR headset, you're immersed inside simulated environments, which may be a one-on-one -on -one conversation. There may, may be more of a panel. So you might have an HR manager in there with you, with the pretend employee. Um, and you have that environment, which helps to evoke that emotional response to the learning content. And then you can role play exactly what you want to. So you can tell the software, I want to role play a disciplinary um, focused around misconduct. And then, <clears throat> and then it will role play with you and you will say what you want to say. And then it will react based on that. And it will respond based on exactly what you've said. The next level there would be having practicing those conversations, which may where the employee is say understanding um, or if they are very defensive and much more difficult because you never know how someone is going to react to those kinds of conversations or some phrases you might use that might make them react in a certain way. So being able to practice them and not knowing what is going to come back to you because things like branch learning, you could learn the different ways that that's going to go because it's preset. But with mm -hmm. using something like generative AI, I don't know how it's going to go. You don't know how it's going to go. And that's exactly how it is in real life as well. So having that role play on demand is, is I think, a game changer for practicing difficult conversations. Yeah. And again, role play is really important. That, that again, is something I've done in, in the classroom with students in the university space. And I know this is something that corporations will often go through role plays uh, in professional development spaces within their organizations or an HR person will come over and talk with a manager to like role play with them, how they're going to have this difficult conversation. That's great. And if you can still do those things, that's wonderful. The point here though, is like, oh my gosh, the efficiencies of all of this, the scalability of all of this, like everyone, there's no bottlenecks around like a professor or an HR person going and meeting with, uh, you know, a manager, like there's no bottlenecks. You can just practice. Uh, and I think about like, the Star Trek holodeck, you know, that's, that's kind of what comes to mind when I think about this. Now, obviously it's, it's, it's a little different because it's all uh, virtual reality. Uh, but the same kind of thing applies. Like you can go in there, immerse yourself and have real time, unique interactions uh, by mm -hmm. providing prompts and, and then roll with it. And we've all seen it in TV shows and in movies where things like that kind of happen that sci-fi is like real life now. We can really do it and it's really super cool. And, and we should be learning, like looking for ways to leverage that so that we can um, give people, I mean, real time, unlimited access to ongoing coaching, mentoring, training and development without any bottlenecks. Yeah. And it has that element of continuous learning because mm -hmm. yes you might practice one difficult conversation but then the next difficult conversation you're having might be completely different um and we've programmed in certain rubrics into the feedback mechanisms too so mm -hmm. while everyone's conversation might be slightly different the feedback you will get is still based on like core principles to follow to have those kinds of conversations um and i mean similarly um if especially we're talking about higher education um we, we also use it for job interview practice where you can mm -hmm, interview with yeah. a panel for, for any role at any level at any company. Um, and it will give each individual student feedback based on their specific performance rather than just being like, you need to follow the star method or car method. Um, <laughs> we've programmed it in and said, oh, you could have used this example. Um, and we even have suggested responses. So um, I mean, if there's a question of why did you apply for this role and somebody just says oh it came up on my LinkedIn and I'm desperate for a job obviously that's not the best <laughs> reply um, so it won't just say that reply wasn't ideal it will say this is what you could have said and then it lists out you could have said you read this about the company blah blah blah, blah. Um, so it helps them in that respect as well yeah yeah I love it we've already touched on it a bit you know the, the AI component behind all of this and uh, I believe you you use ChatGPT uh, as kind of the foundation for this. Maybe describe that a little bit, how that's being used with virtual speech. Yeah, so um, we use GPT and other technologies to bring it all together. Um, but 
there's a few ways in which we do that. One is around feedback, which we've already touched upon, and that's feedback on your delivery. So that's things like your eye contact, hesitation words, tone, et cetera, but also on the content of what you've said as well. So before generative AI, we couldn't provide feedback on the content. We could provide it on delivery, but providing it on the content was that that next level. Um, the second way in which we use Gen AI is around interactivity. So now that it can distinguish what you're actually talking about, it can now happen that the avatars will react based on what you said or how you said it. So, for example, if you are speaking too quietly or too sw- slowly, the avatars might start talking to each other because you've you've lost their attention. Similarly, if you <clears throat> want the avatars to ask you questions at cert- that throughout your presentation, they will raise their hands and you click on them and then they will ask you a question based on what you've already said. So those questions aren't preloaded. That's the AI coming up with a question again that's more realistic to what will actually happen in a presentation. And then the final way, and one of the most significant ways in which we're using Gen AI is to have the role plays, which are amazing, but also have those role plays in additional languages. So Mm -hmm. we now have role plays in nine languages at the moment. So pre-Gen AI, we just had English. It was... um, effectively branch learning scenarios it was it was slightly more advanced than that in that it could pick up on certain keywords but it wasn't a free-flowing conversation like it is now um and now we can do that in other languages as well so um we actually found it interesting it was a an accidental use case really is that um some people are now using virtual speech to practice their language skills so we mm. have a VR environment, which is just free flowing conversations. So if you don't want to do one of our off the shelf, um, difficult conversations, if you've got one of your own that we haven't already put prompts in for, you can just free flow a conversation there. But what people are doing as well is that they, if, if English is their second language, they're going in there and having practicing an English conversation or vice versa with French, German, Italian, Spanish. Um, so that's been a really interesting byproduct of what we've been doing is that there's people who are using it to help with their business language skills too. I love that. That's that's such a useful um, use case that I hadn't even considered. That's that's really no, we cool. didn't either. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. They're really cool. Um, you know, and I think especially for you know hats off to people who are bilingual you know most of the world is it seems like you know but in the u.s uh we we are, we're kind of lazy from a language perspective and we kind of just expect everyone else to speak english and same so, as the uk it's embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> so i mean how wonderful you know to bone up uh on on a language uh to to get a little bit of practice um i i lived for about two and a half years in south korea um, this was uh-huh. a couple decades ago, so I can't say that I'm as as conversantly fluent or uh, or fluid as I was back then. But you know that that was something I worked really really hard at, and then I came back and I've I've been back you know a few times, but I haven't like lived there like I did then. It would be amazing to be able to go into a, an immersive space to keep up my language skills. Um, mm-hmm. You know, right now basically my 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 fallback is like I'm gonna go watch like a. Uh, K drama on Netflix or something like that. Yeah, and, like just immerse <laughs> myself. But other than that, you know, like how cool would that be? I I, I just think that's that's a really amazing thing. Um, maybe you could point out what are some of the other types of results, whether they're like intended, planned, you know, things that you were hoping to see versus unintended uh, use cases. What are some of those results that you've seen in the platform, and where do you think things are going with this technology, like in the next five years? Oh, wow. Big question. So um, in terms of the results, um, we've seen improvement of skills by up to 25 percent in just 10 minutes. And that is measuring those AI metrics from the Mm -hmm. first time compared to the second time, third time and so on, and just comparing them. Now, I I wouldn't say that necessarily directly translates into the real world. You don't just spend 10 minutes and then you're improved by 25% because that improvement is based on in a VR environment. So, for example, if you're scared of public speaking, you do the public speaking course, your metrics may go up 25% and 
for example, we have 86% of our users feel more confident as well, but then you have to carry on learning like with anything. It's not a quick fix to then sure. take that into the real world. So just because you've become confident in VR, you'll be more confident in real life, but you're, some, you're not going to have that same level of confidence straight away. Um, so, so yeah, even though there's that skill improvement of 25% in 10 minutes, you still have to keep working at that to translate that into the real world. Um, we've had higher retention rates, so retention rates of up to 75%. And that's just because people are learning through experience. They're not, they, the, the learning is much more interactive, much more active, very different to, to reading or watching learning material to actually being inside that learning material and inside that training rather than watching an animation you're part of that learning experience and the, the the last one which i think is is interesting is around how much more focused and engaged learners are with vr um, and ai learning content there is a natural way in which people become more focused in that they have a headset on their face <laughs> so mm. they can't be scrolling through their emails at the same time or or not as VR headsets are at the moment but it's also because they have to be engaged for, for anything to be happening around them um, so I think it's brilliant for making sure people are focused and people are more invested because the experience is about them it's not just something they are passively reading or watching and clicking and hoping for the best or and clicking until they get the right answer then the quiz says they pass <laughs> like it's much more interactive and personalized for their learning yeah and personalized I think that that's the the point i really wanted to hit home on what you were just saying that personalization uh, of this this professional development and upskilling learning and development process is so huge. I mean, that's yeah. like the Chris, that's, that's like the Holy grail of what you want is for everyone to have real time feedback, personalized learning. Uh, and when that can happen, of course it engages people more, of course they're going to be more invested in their own learning because it's relevant to them. Yeah, exactly. And, and that links to the second part of your question as well around where I think this technology is going I, I mean, I wouldn't like to hazard a guess for five years time, because if we look at the last <laughs> Maybe two one year, years, <laughs> yeah. um, but in the in the short term future, I think personalization and using AI to personalize things is only going to rapidly increase. So whether that's um, analyzing for individual learning patterns, preferences, performance, and then tailoring the experience to each student. So, for example, in VR, that would tailor um their literal experience based on where they're at at the moment. And then also having um, more adaptive learning systems as well. So the difficulty can change based off where somebody's starting point already is because nobody's starting point is exactly the same. Um, and so if you are, for example, if you've been a manager for 10 years, your version of practicing for difficult conversations is going to be different to someone who they're in their first month of being a manager and they're having to have their first performance review with someone. So being able to have that dynamic and adaptive way of being able to utilize content so that it's pitched at any level rather than just being static at one level. I think those are two key ways in which personalization will, um, will become better really over the next Probably only a year knowing the rate of, of generative AI adapting. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible what's happened in the last year. Um, mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, think trying to fathom what could happen in the next year or so is hard to, to really even do. So I agree. I, you know, I think we we need to to lean into this disruption. Um, it can be a little uncomfortable, but man, the the, the potential, the opportunities uh, that are illustrated through your company and, and the offerings that you provide um, are, are tremendous. And so, you know, I, I think despite the discomfort that some may have, you know, let's explore these these uh, these tools and these technologies and the use cases that can help us and help our people uh, to be better, to be more fulfilled, to have more successful careers and to help our organizations thrive and succeed. Well, Sophie, this has been a real pleasure. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Um, sure. So um, you can find me on LinkedIn. So um, it's linkedin.com forward slash Sophie Thompson VR. 
Um, or you can just visit our website, virtualspeech.com, and you can contact any of us through there. Um, in terms of a final comment on the topic, I would say um, there is some discomfort around both VR and AI and, and this like sci-fi future. But I think we, for example, we've been using this for nine years now. Um, we've been using these technologies to improve human traits and the irony is not lost on us that we are using <laughs> artificial intelligence to improve human intelligence but there's just so much opportunity that those can bring and there are potential negative side effects but there's also huge opportunity whether that's to learn with others around the world but in the same virtual space to um getting personalized feedback on on any conversation or any um, social interaction um, there's a wealth of opportunities it's just I think we all need to adjust to to what we're best at and then what the AI is best at I love it thank you so much Sophie it's been a real pleasure I encourage the audience to reach out get connected find out more about what Sophie and her team can do for you check out virtual speech and as always I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day and I hope you all have a great week Thanks for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We hope you stay healthy and safe and please join us again soon.